So what we saw in that initial squat was that the foot was collapsing uncontrollably by proxy and going up the chain, the knee and the hip then sort of collapsed inward. And so what you end up seeing a lot of times is when lifters have an uncontrollable uh, medial arch is that they're now asking their hips to kind of take over and have to course correct while you're going down in a squat. And what can end up happening is that you start getting a lot of uh, patellofemoral motion going internally. Um, by proxy, you could also have the tibia kind of internally rotated a bit excessively. And so what you end up having is sort of a malalignment while you're going down under load. Um, again, this is also to say that it's okay if we have some internal rotation in both the tibia and, the, and at the femur, but we want to be able to also externally rotate and put ourselves in the best possible position to succeed as we're squatting a heavy load. So sitting on this box, you can see that this is kind of approximates about a 90 degree squat angle. If my feet start collapsing, or if you notice a client's feet start collapsing and going this way, because the box is holding my weight up, it's pretty easy for me to control what's going on everywhere else, right? And so a lot of times we start blaming this uh, knees valgus or the knees collapsing inward on, oh, you have weak glute medius. You need to do some more clamshells or you need to put a band around your knee to help improve that motion. When in reality, if we look down at, at maybe a person's feet, we can more easily assess, maybe they just don't have real good dynamic control through their intrinsic foot muscles, which is now affecting the position of the chain. So when I'm coaching a client, I will always tell them before they even unrack the bar or whatever they're, they're doing for a squat, is I want you to feel the weight of your body evenly distributed throughout your feet. And so that as you're coming down, that really shouldn't change. So as you're hitting, let's say this 90 degree position, you really shouldn't feel the weight all of a sudden shift towards your heels, nor should it be going towards your toes which I would say the majority of people know that's probably not a very good squat, at least when you're under load. So as I get to this bottom position, it should feel relatively the same as it is when I'm up here. On the side, how that sort of plays out, again, feeling a good weight distribution through the feet as I come down in a squat. It should be nice and balanced to where the weight feels pretty evenly distributed from front to back and no real shit. The same idea applies to, let's say, something like a split squat. So for this front leg in particular, you want to feel the weight nice and evenly balanced through that front foot. And as I'm coming down into a split squat, it really shouldn't feel that change. So as I'm down here, I really shouldn't feel any excessively translate forward, which might mean the weight starts going to the ball of my foot, or nor am I looking to kind of sit really far back and maybe even sitting into this hip, which now puts all the weight back here um, which some people might do because they have some like uncomfortableness in the knee as they get forward, which is to say we probably need to expose the knee to that range of motion just a little bit more.